Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is now uh, the O level biology November 2020 paper 2 1, and we are going to discuss section B and section C in this. Now, as you all know, answer both questions in this section. You only have the choice in section C. You don't have any choice in section B, so you have to do both the questions. Write your answer in the spaces provided. State the functions of the aorta and the vena cava and describe how each is adapted for its function. So basically, one is an artery and one is a vein. So this is the syllabus point that you must know the structure and function of an artery and a vein. So aorta is the largest artery of the body. Vena cava is one of the veins of the body. So you've got to give me how they are adapted for its function. So not only aorta, but just an artery and a vein, basically. I always tell you that whenever you're doing this essay question, you must write everything you know about it. So the aorta carries oxygenated blood, got you one mark. Then it rises from the left ventricle and takes the blood to the rest of the body, got you the second mark. Then it has thick walls. Third mark, it has got elastic tissue in its walls and it's got muscle tissue in its walls. Another mark, the elastic tissues recoil so the lumen can stretch. Then it carries blood at high pressure. So you have a very thick wall so that it can withstand the high pressure. Then at the beginning of the aorta, there's a valve and this prevents the blood from returning back to the heart. Then for the vena cava, you could have said carries deoxygenated blood from the body to the right atrium. It has thin walls, it has a wide lumen, and it carries blood at low pressure. And there are valves present in the veins, in the body, in the legs, you have valves in the veins. This is to prevent the backflow of blood. So there's a lot of points, and you had to give me any seven of these to get your uh, marks for this. Then coming to uh, the B part of the question, some people are born with a hole in their heart that allows blood to pass between the left and the right sides of the heart. So just how this condition may affect the efficiency of their circulatory system. Now, naturally, there's going to be mixing of the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood. So more of oxygen in the blood, which is sent to the lungs. Basically, deoxygenated blood should go to the lungs. But if it's coming from the left side, then it's going to be oxygenated blood. So more oxygen in the blood sent to the lungs and less oxygen in the blood sent to the body. Then reduced, this will reduce respiration, so reduced energy released. There will be more anaerobic respiration, so more lactic acid will be produced in the body cells. Then the heart beats faster because uh, the cells receiving less oxygen sends impulses, the information goes to the brain. And the brain tells the heart to work faster, so the heart beats faster, so as to meet the oxygen demand. And this, of course, results in uh, blood pressure being reduced because the blood, all the blood is not going, the left ventricle is getting less blood because in the atria there is mixing of the blood. So between the left and the right sides of the heart, we don't know where the mixing is, but sometimes they do tell you whether it's in the atria or so there's mixing. So there's going to be less blood pressure. So lots of points for this 10 marks question. Now you can see the only maximum four marks were allowed. So even if you gave me 10 points, I wouldn't give you any marks because for the seven marks, they've divided it four for the aorta and three for the vena cava. So maximum four so remember, you must write, you shouldn't all just write about the aorta, but you had to give me. So maximum, it says four marks here, and the rest, of course, you can give for the vena cava. Now, the points were aorta carries oxygenated blood, which rises from the left ventricle to the rest of the body. It has very thick walls. It has elastic and muscle tissue in the walls. The elastic recoil occurs, and this can, of course, alter the size of the lumen. Then a high blood pressure is because of the left ventricle pumping into the aorta. So the aorta has blood at a very high pressure. Then there are valves present at the base of the aorta, and this prevents the blood flowing back into the heart. For the veins or the vena cava, you could have said deoxygenated blood uh, from the body to the right atrium. Then it has got thin walls, it has a wide lumen, and is blood carrying at low pressure. Why? Because vena cavas are returning blood back to the heart, so the pressure is all being lost. And there are valves present uh, to prevent uh, backflow of blood. In the arteries, there was only one valve present at the base of the aorta, which was the semilunar valve. Here, of course, you have veins. Uh, you have a lot of valves in the leg veins, especially because when you're standing up, uh, the blood is uh, going to be returning back to the heart against gravity. So that is a little tough. So that is why you have these uh, valves in the leg veins. So out of these, so four for the aorta and so at least three for uh, vena cava and you would get your seven out of seven. Now, when you look at this question, you know, so you've got to understand where we are asking you. They're going to ask you that, is there a hole here? A hole here. But whatever is happening is the right side is mixing here and the right side is going this side. So you see the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood is mixing. 
then more oxygen is being sent to the because the left side blood should be going to the body now that's coming here so this is going to the lungs from here we're going to go to the lungs so the more oxygen and blood sent to the lungs less oxygen sent to the body because deoxygenated is going here and aorta comes out of this side so if the aorta comes out of this side then this is less oxygen to the blood sent to the body so less oxygen means less aerobic respiration so less energy released released remember please remember energy is not produced i keep on saying this in every video of mine so heart is going to beat faster to meet the oxygen demand because less oxygen reaching the body cells all this information goes to the brain then the brain sends impulses to the heart okay start beating faster so heart rate increases or heart beats faster and blood pressure is reduced because the blood which was supposed to go into the aorta now is some of it is going here and some of it is going into the aorta so there's a lot of uh, this explanation which you must understand before you start doing this question now coming to question number 7a explain how energy originally supplied by the sun is eventually used to power the muscles of a lion when it runs now you see you got to understand from the sun so its photosynthesis light energy to chemical energy plants producers may have this energy which is stored and then that is stored as glucose or starch or as a carbohydrate and then of course it's converted into proteins and the energy from plant to herbivore like for instance when the lion eats the grass then the energy from the herbivore to the lion so the lion can't eat grass sorry the lion eats a deer so the deer eats grass and then the lion eats the deer and then absorption and then the glucose absorbed and the glucose respired and the energy released from respiration so how would you word it uh, the wording is during photosynthesis light energy to chemical energy in plants producers produce glucose starch sucrose fats when i put a slash it means you could have used any of these terms please don't put a slash in you when you're writing your uh, exam uh, food from plant to herbivore then food from herbivore to lion then absorption of glucose uh, so you know when the lion eats a deer then all that is going to be absorbed and all the glucose is going to reach the blood uh, and then the blood is going to carry to all the cells of the body in every cell of the body glucose is going to be respired and energy from respiration is going to be used for muscle contraction so how would you word this these are the ways that you would word this answer then coming to the b part of the question now as you can see explain why human community is now considered important to recycle materials why do you want to recycle less energy used in recycling rather than manufacturing like if you recycle paper but well, there's nothing if you make paper but well, that's going to cost you a lot of fossil fuel fossil fuel are finite their resources that are running out they need to be conserved they're not infinite infinite means uh mother unlimited no they're finite so they're running out and need to be conserved then reduce pollution reduce waste environment the landfills they have need to burn them you see you see how all this trash is just you know used to do landfills or they you need to burn it plastics cannot even be recycled so plastic and some materials is not biodegradable so they don't decompose when they don't think opposed they collect so plastic bags can result in uh, in water can result in uh, plastic bags being eaten by fish or being eaten by cow somewhere else and uh, killing them so you can talk of any example of any effect and a specified waste of it so how would you word it less energy used in recycling fossil fuels running out reduce pollution reduce waste not being burned plastics not don't biodegrade So these are the wordings I expect you to use, and please be careful when you word these answers because it's very important that you use the correct biological English. Now coming to question number uh, section C, answer either question this or question nine. Write your answers. So this is the only one where you have a choice. Explain why plants that are grown commercially are often reproduced by asexual methods. Why? Because there's only going to be mitosis, and there's only going to be one parent, and all the organisms produced are genetically cloned or identical. then artificial selection is under human control then uh, reproduces desirable features like for instance we want a very very tall sugarcane crop so more the height more the sugarcane more the crop yield and then of course you can be doing this throughout the year you don't have to wait for seasons you don't have to wait for flowers and seeds and pollinators as fast because you don't have to wait for the seeds to be produced first the flowering then the seed formation then the collect the seeds then sow the seeds and allow them to germinate and then allow the plant to grow it's a long story then eight b in some part of the world bees which are insects are being killed in large numbers by a parasite called the whatever 
might suggest why this is widely considered to be a potentially serious problem to ecosystems. Why? Bees are pollinators, so reduce uh, yields of crops or lesser seeds, lesser plants, less plants for herbivores, less bees and less uh, plants, less food for consumers, less food chains will be disrupted, so less biodiversity and reduced honey production. So all these points in this 5-5 five, five, and you have to do either this question or the next question. So how would you word these uh, answers? Mitosis genetically identical, they are clones or only one parent. Artificial selection is a human, this thing and you can do it, you can control it when you want to do it in any manner. Desirable features will be selected like I just said, the height of the sugarcane crop or more crop yield, more seeds in the wheat crop, more seeds in the rice crop. Can be done throughout the year, meaning in all seasons. You don't need pollinators and it's fast. Why is it fast? Because you don't have to wait for the flowering and then the seed formation and then you wait for the seeds and then you collect the seeds and you plant the seeds and then you grow them. So it's going to be fast, but you have to give me the reason for it being fast. Then in the B part of the question, bees are pollinators. So if there are no pollinators, they're going to be less crop yield. they are going to be less seeds. You see pollination results in fertilization and then fruit and seed formation. So if you are plants will be produced and less plants for herbivores then lesser uh, bees means less food less biodiversity food chains disrupted and of course the last point is reduced honey production so out of these you have to give me any five and there are about more than five in this mark scheme so please remember you write correctly and then i'm sure you're going to get your marks on this paper now coming to the last question which is the question 9, describe with example what is meant by the term mutation, name factors which may increase the rate of mutation. Now there's a 5 mark question and you have to give me 5 mark scheme points, basically you have to tell me what is a mutation. Mutation is a change in the gene or a change in the DNA and or it could be a change in the chromosome number. So there are two types of mutation, mutation gene mutation and chromosome mutation. And the example of that is sickle cell anemia in which the gene changes and you get sickle cell anemia or the one in which the chromosome changes is Down syndrome in which a person has 47 chromosomes because the sperm has 24 and the ovum has 23 so the zygote has 47 chromosomes so every cell of that human being has 47 chromosomes that's a major chromosome mutation and results in a lot of uh, bad effects. Then the reasons which cause the rate of mutation, increase the rate of mutation can be radiation like people are exposed to uh, UV light results in skin cancer or other types of uh, gamma rays or other x-rays and chemicals like tar in cigarette smoke will cause mutation. So these were the, uh, about the, we have about seven mark scheme points and any five of these would have got you your uh, five marks. Then the B part of the question says artificial insemination is a method of breeding farm animals in which the semen, the liquid containing sperm from a selected male animal is sent to a farmer to fertilize females of the same species. Suggest so possible advantage of this method over natural methods of breeding farm animals. Now of course if you don't know uh, your chapter or your bio part then of course it's going to be difficult but if you know it you know what is artificial insemination. Farmer does not need to keep male animals uh, uh, prevents inbreeding, then sperm transported from anywhere, maybe far away. Then this is artificial selection or selective breeding. Desirable features are selected. Then increased chances of successful fertilization and it's easier or quicker or more convenient. And the economic benefit is that if you have high milk yielding cows and all these from artificial insemination will all be high milk yielding or maybe are they more uh, meat producing, so they'll all be more meat producing. It depends what sort of a farm you have. Either you have a dairy farm or a meat farm. So all these points you have to give me and I'll just give you the wordings of it. So basically you must know how to word this change in DNA or change in the DNA is actually a mutation and uh, it can result in two types. Change in the chromosome number, which is the Down syndrome, then sickle cell anemia, which is a change in the gene for hemoglobin and uh, the rate increases the rate of mutation what increases the rate of mutation are these two points radiation or exposure to uv light or x-rays or gamma rays and chemicals like for example tar and cigarette smoke results in lung cancer so any of these and you had to give me five points to get your five marks but you had to see meant by the term mutation and name the factors may increase the rate of mutation then coming to the b part of the question artificial insemination a farmer does not need to keep a male animals, prevents inbreeding because you keep on crossing the offsprings and also you keep on, that's called inbreeding. 
Sperms can be transported from anywhere. It's not very difficult. It's a small container in which you can transport uh, the semen in liquid nitrogen. Then it's selective breeding, artificial selection, desirable features selected, increased chances of successful fertilization, and quicker and easier and much more convenient. You don't need another male. You don't have to feed another male. Economic benefits explained, so then you get all high milk yielding animals. Thank you for watching and uh, please uh, do leave any comments if there's anything I can do before your upcoming exam next week. All the best and all my prayers with you.